Hello, it's me again, and uh, I would like to present you the second part of the uh, interview, uh, recent interview on Levit of Chess YouTube with uh, Eric Alibest, uh, the CIO of Chess.com, as I understand. Uh, so I hope you've seen the first part, uh, just published it recently. And uh, so today, now let's continue and I will give my comments uh, on this. So now we are more getting in the second half of this um, video, we are getting to numbers uh, and uh, also enough questions uh, to Chesscom. Uh, so, but okay, let's continue. Let me look at my numbers here, hang on. Yeah, that's okay. good, we are getting- Let's to go to numbers, numbers. yeah, it's very interesting. Let's go to numbers. Okay, let me get let me let me give you some numbers while I'm yeah, just looking at sure, it. Yeah, sure, sure. Let me do all, we'll do all the numbers at once. Um, sure. Titled players are there on chess.com? Yeah. Do you have a guess? Yeah, that is very interesting actually, uh, because I couldn't I couldn't uh, find any information about the amount of title players and title accounts. There is quite a significant difference. So altogether, I think there are roughly like twenty thousand title players, a bit more. Uh, actually, you know, in the world. So I was trying to guess how many title players are there. And uh, yeah, so let's uh, check what will be the answer. Do you want to get? Do you want to guess any of these numbers? Do you want me to? Just I want to guess all the numbers. Okay. How I many guess all the numbers? Total title players are on Chess.com. How many title players are there on Chess.com? Uh, we are we talking about only official title accounts, or like Fabiano Gee. has a few accounts, uh, or. <laughs> He told me. <laughs> uh, that, that, that's interesting. I, this might include some second accounts, actually. I don't want to yeah. quote for sure. No, but this, is, uh, this makes a whole difference. I mean, your, your team was preparing statistics for you, but, uh, well, uh, I mean, title players or title accounts? Because, yeah, again, true, every title player has a right to have two accounts. So, uh, I mean, it, the difference can be up to 50%. Yes, yeah? so uh, that's, I mean, uh, that's is very important to know. Yeah. Okay, then let's say 25,000. 12,000. 12,000. Ah. 12,000. No, of course. Yeah, because Ilya doesn't know probably that there are only 20,000 um more or less uh, title players and okay if we are talking about i guess it's talking about players not accounts yeah because accounts um, maybe there are more accounts i i really don't know i mean finally as you will see he doesn't know himself if it's twelve thousand players or twelve thousand accounts another very important question uh how many active players or active accounts are there that is also very important because somebody could have uh, opened it and just forgot about it or never use it. Yeah, that also makes a big difference when you when you more or less try to assess the amount of the percentage of cheating on chess.com. Uh, so, but those unfortunately those uh, very important numbers uh, yeah were not revealed here. That's not a lot. Okay. Uh, of those, uh, fifteen hundred are women's. And one thousand, about you know, a little over ten thousand are, are uh, titles. But it's very okay. important if it's only one account or two accounts, because I think I everybody, I, I think everybody has every big grandmaster, every every grandmaster has many accounts on Chesscom. More than we one. only allowed two. We well, that's a question. Two are allowed. I don't know if some people have more, but for instance, I have only one. But uh, well, let me guess. If twelve thousand, uh, if it's, I, I suppose it's twelve thousand players uh, or accounts. I don't know. Let's say accounts. Most probably, most probably is talking about accounts because otherwise they would calculate. Yeah. So if if they gave a number, probably it's a number of accounts. So then you can well, in average. I mean, again, very difficult to say how many of them are using two accounts and, and how many they just have one. But my estimation would be maybe like, okay, out of these 12,000 accounts, maybe it's like nine, ten thousand 10,000 uh, uh, real people. I mean, yeah, uh, players. We only allow two. Okay, um, so okay. we have 12,000 title accounts. Okay. How many titled accounts were closed in 2023? I think you told me that. 
Now it's getting interesting. So we can try uh, to estimate very, very generally, of course, because again, we are not getting the concrete precise numbers, but very generally the, uh, well, the amount of cheating or chess.com, which was proved already. I mean, people who were banned, uh, it's, all, it's pretty obvious that uh, the not, not every cheater is caught, but still, so historical kind of historical percentage of in general how many people are cheating and probably it's pretty stable logic uh, logically to assess that it must be res quite stable that no uh, it was like okay let's say 500 titled accounts closed last year but you said 94. that it's 94, 94? no Just but you also year. you said somewhere that it was like one percent well, I'll say that it, since 2014, so for the last 10 years, okay. it's been 691. 691 accounts, yeah? Title accounts. Yeah. So I was the majority. <laughs> the majority of those by far are national masters and FIDE masters. US ah, yeah, those famous FIDE masters. Uh... 2,300 feed the masters. But uh, anyway, seriously, okay, let's make the math then. Because uh, Chesscom is stating and let, okay, the cheating, they ban about 1% of accounts in general. And in general, the cheating might be a bit uh, higher, as you can see in the Danny Rash interview, which I also commented on. Uh, on my channel um, that, uh, well, maximum 3%, everything more than 5 is just crazy, absolutely, uh, you know, ridiculous. But let's calculate then. So let's say, okay, let's make the math. Um, let's say 12,000 accounts, let's take 10,000 people, even though I believe less, especially because many of them are not playing actively. Well, I, I suppose because uh, throughout those the years, uh, Chesscom was only Im increasing the amount of users. So probably the amount of um, users now, title users, is probably maximum or close to maximum they ever had. So since the amount of users is definitely not doubling, and this is like constantly not more than, let's say, 10,000 title players, uh, probably there were less before and uh, okay, some are leaving because banned or some other reasons, but many are joining because they become title players and or they uh, haven't been on Chesscom and they become a member of Chesscom. So I suppose it was probably never really much more than 10,000 um, title players. So let's assume that uh, these 10,000 title players, so altogether since 2014, I don't know why 14, why not earlier, but okay. Uh, so there were, what, uh, around close to 700 uh, people already banned. I mean, like, Chesscom is sure they were cheating. Uh, well, which makes it, I'm sorry, but it makes it like, uh, what, uh, seven, eight percent or something. Yeah. I mean, uh, well, if it's out of 10, 10,000, more or less 7%, but this is already, I mean, like 7% of title players throughout this period of like, like many, many years already cheated. I mean, like uh, and uh, you can only imagine how many were not caught so what what is this one two three percent number i mean there is a certain historical i would say um yeah historical pass which shows that more or less around ten percent of oh sorry seven uh um uh, percent is uh, cheating yeah I mean, so why, what is the 1%? So, I mean, it's who is closer to the reality, Fabiano or, or Chesscom? You know, United States or other national masters and or FIDE masters. Okay, so how, how many were, again, in 2023? How many bent accounts? 90, 94. 94. And some how of them... Do think, how many do you think confessed? Confessed. That is interesting. 60? 31. So usually about a third. Only. 31. I thought there were more because, you know, this kind of candy you get that you are forgiven and you get a second chance. Uh, well, that seems to be like a nice candy to confess. 
so if uh, if so many people like two thirds they don't want to confess even uh, being sure that they will be thrown out uh, from chesscom uh, maybe it means they really not all of them were cheating i don't know confessed and others said no we didn't do that deny or no response so the accounts stay banned and they don't play anymore yeah the account stays banned uh well i mean i don't know if it was just accidental but uh uh, he didn't answer uh, that the account stayed banned and they don't play anymore. He just said the account stayed banned. I hope that uh, the second question, uh, the answer is also yes, that they don't play anymore. But uh, uh, accidentally or not, but there was no clear answer on it. Account stays banned. And uh, this 31, they, they still play? Yeah. Or they're in the middle of their like probation. What is probation? They can't play right away. They have to. They serve some amount of time that they're not allowed to play. In the in the online prison, let's say. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. Uh, okay. What else? That's very uh, interesting. Okay. Um, how, from prize events. So from prize events versus other events in the in the college. We've had, in the college league, there's been 30, uh, but those aren't. In the those college league, top. what is college yeah. league? Just the the, the the collegiate chess league at, at, at chess.com. Um, there's been 30, but they're, none of them are title players. Oh, okay. Um, okay, sorry. I, it was just in here. Uh, title Tuesday, there's been 46. So 36 uh, players banned in, in. 46. 46 banned in Title Tuesday. Yeah, like either during or right after Title Tuesday. Sorry, the question, I mean, 46 uh, during the whole period or just uh, during the last year, let's say. That I have stat, that I have here. If, I don't know, again, uh, this is from someone on our team. I'm not sure if that was just last year sure. or if it was no, all time. No, no, but I mean, maybe uh, it makes a huge difference. I mean, okay, maybe it was... Uh, important to check it before the interview i mean what does it mean i don't know it just uh, without this additional information for the whole period or just uh, one year i mean doesn't this number doesn't give any information just doesn't mean anything i'm sorry okay and then for the cct we have had one national Champion master Chester. and two candidate masters and in the main event, we've had zero. And in the speed chess championship, we've had zero. So that's basically all that. I can, I can believe that because there are some measures there. Yeah. There yeah. are some measures, the cameras and everything. Still, I believe there are some uh, in those events, but uh, definitely much, much less than in titled use or other tournaments or friendly games when, uh, yeah, there are simply no cameras and no measures at all. Yeah. Okay, so how many people who have who are on their second chance account have played in Title Tuesday? Uh, you mean this thirty-one out of thirty-one? Well, thirty-one is just last year, but there's ah, okay. been more over time. All of them. In in two thousand twenty-three, seventy-seven people who played a Title Tuesday were on their second chance account. But 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 uh, oh, that is a lot. Wait, I mean uh, that is really a lot. How, how, what is that in percents? Oh, What's the percentage question. of that? Out well, there's of, been out of all. Yeah, I mean, there's there's thousands. You know, there's thousands of people who play in, in title. No, uh, I mean thousands, but how many thousands? I mean, how many? Let's say play during the year of I mean, title players because there shouldn't be like thousands. Uh, my my, I mean, okay, I'm not there to just calculate like with pen and paper, but it's possible to provide this information. I mean, how many altogether title players ever participated, let's say during 2023? Uh, what's so difficult to give us this information? Why why we are not getting it? Oh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, 70, 70 something of them were on uh, on second chance. And how yeah. many on second chess that didn't play? You don't uh, I don't have the total number, but it's about, I mean, I would guess that if there's 690 of these, that somewhere between, you know, two, two and 300 second chance accounts to, in total. Okay, but if, if only the first, if only every third of, every third of them confesses, 
then out of 700, you should have had like 240 something. Yeah. Okay. But only a small number of those play in Title Tuesdays. So they don't play in Title Tuesdays. That's very interesting. Yeah, that's actually yeah. that's actually very strange. I mean, why? Uh, well, maybe it's correct, but it just uh, I'm quite uh, surprised that uh, most of those players who got second chance and a very small amount of them, like maybe yeah, uh, a bit more than 10% only, who or something, as I understood, they're playing in Title Tuesday. That's a bit strange, but okay, maybe it's right. Who knows? Why is that? Why don't they play? Okay, what else? We've also, in the last year, asked um, 300 and 365 players to join a fair play call. And mm -hmm. we're going to up that number this year. Uh, 152 players have been kicked out of Title Tuesday for not joining the calls. How many um, again? Sorry, Eric. How many? We've had 150 people have been kicked out of Title Tuesday for not joining the fair play calls for that particular event. But they were not banned, yeah? They were not necessarily. Some may have been. Okay. That's just total kicked out. Then okay. there's ban. You know, sometimes they're kicked. Sometimes we get them on. We say, hey, hey, time to get on camera. And they won't do it. And then they get kicked out and they're not allowed to join again until they come back on camera for a few times. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start to get more and more strict on this. Yeah, but uh, that's also that's uh, not uh, not a great system, I believe. I spoke with chess.com like half a year ago and I told them that it's not really working because why not, let's say, why not to do the following system? Uh, some players who recently were clearly overperforming, you put them on Zoom call from the round one uh, uh, as long as they show uh, the uh, I mean they show a decent level of play which I mean more or less corresponding to what they have been doing uh, before and then maybe you release them from the zoom call but what uh, Chesscom is doing is around eight usually they uh, start to ask people to join call those people who are well performing extremely well and okay but the problem is that uh, by then they already if some of them were cheating they already cheated some people and let's say they whether they uh, refuse to join the call i mean because it's like few minutes time you might simply not noticed or you might go to take a coffee you know so i mean i'm pretty sure some of those just missed this message simply yeah but uh, or even if they join a call and then they play on their own finally, let's say they play worse uh, and finally they don't get into prizes, but the damage is done already. So I believe those players who are clearly overperforming, they must be, you know, from the next uh, title Tuesday on, they must be on the call from the very beginning. There are not that many of such players, so it's not going to be so difficult to organize such a call, let's say 10, 20 players, I mean, or whatever, and uh, probably not more every time who are, all, who are heavily overperforming. And that's it. But I don't think it's an efficient system what they do. It more looks like, okay, to do something, to do something to show it to public, but it doesn't, I mean, the damage uh, in the first eight rounds, there is already a lot of damage. Uh, if somebody potentially cheats. Okay. Those are the numbers I brought today. I have a couple other actually Not interesting much. numbers, but it's more specific to events. Okay. okay. Let's hear them. It's very interesting. Okay, good. Before I start, what would your definition of an unexpected result be? I'm the wrong Let, person to ask. I, I don't think that all this... That I mean, it's a very general question. What do you mean unexpected result? I mean, obviously the result with a low mathematical probability, yeah? But, uh, well, I mean, everything uh, which is below 50% is unexpected in some way. So it's a too general question, I would say. Statistics, tell me, tell me much. I mean, I don't have access to real statistics, your statistics, yeah. but... Yeah. Uh, well, only well, let me say this. Let's... Yeah. Let's say that given a person's rating online, their chess.com rating, and let's just assume for a second that that's roughly accurate to their real rating. Now, that's a separate question. We can talk more about that. But let's just assume for a second that there's a 2,400 player playing a 2,900 player. 
Okay. And well, let's say that all the time that people who are... Yeah, that is definitely if 2400 beating, I mean, somebody like 500 elo points higher, I mean, that is definitely a very unexpected, I mean, mathematically. Roughly, you know, 500 points apart, an online blitz. Let's say that there's a 10% chance that those people win. No, there is much, much less chance in such a scenario, 500 uh, points difference. But okay, I mean, yeah, it's uh, like confusing numbers. Obviously, it's much, much less than 10% in one particular game. Does that seem unusual? Is, would that seem, would that kind of trigger you to be like, ah, oh, that's, sure. that's unusual? Yeah, that's, that's unusual because it's not correct. Sure. 10%? Sure. Okay. One in 10, that's not that unusual. You would see a lot. Um, so you, it's different numbers. These are confidence intervals for statistics. Maybe you have an 80% or a 90% or a 95 or a 99. Then what's so, happening with the Hikaru? Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> if Hikaru wins like uh, 250 games against uh, against 2,900, that's something very odd. That's a, the, well, the, the, again, that's what had, we were saying with Kramnik, that, yeah, that, yeah. That, yeah. That, 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 that he should lose at least every one out of 10, but he doesn't. He does, but just not always. No, I mean, uh, uh, not actually one out of 10, much more, much less, or at least miss points. But again, uh, I want to repeat, and I'm repeating again and again, again, the explanation of this, what has to be done? It has to be all those tricks, which I mentioned, there are many, uh, really many, uh, the mathematical probability should be calculated of such tricks. And if it's extremely low, according to my mathematicians, they calculate it very seriously. It's actually not easy at all to calculate. Uh, you have to be a real professional. There are so many nuances there, but it's extremely low. So then there are questions how it can be possible and so on. And in fact, it can be, uh, it's not, uh, that's why it was not accusation of Hikaru because as let's say something can be wrong on his side in case if it's almost impossible or also very possible that the ratings of of his opponents are heavily i mean uh, i mean has not, not much to do with the reality so they are well maybe maybe again he, but, uh, theoretically they could have been cheating to get this rating and not cheating in those games and that is why that explains such results because let's say if they would be if the gap would be like 700 elo points uh, between those two players like Hikaru and his opponent then this result would be actually inside the kind of statistical probabilities but since it's very often like 300 only or 400 maximum and still such like long 50 plus game streaks that uh, might as well mean that you have really to examine the players and how come they are stably having such rating and losing like 0 20 to a player even if it's hikaru so that is the point of my request and they tried uh, hikaru himself and chesscom they tried to maneuver it into some accusation of concrete player which is which was not the idea in every streak yeah so yeah, but okay. Uh, sorry, let's come back. I mean, again, uh, it's... These are confidence intervals for statistics. Yeah. Maybe you have an 80% or so a 90%. Yeah, asking, or, then, how come? But he yeah. doesn't. He does, but just not always in every streak. Yeah. So Of course he does. He can, you cannot play without losing at all. But it's like, it's not about... Uh, I mean, explaining he's great and he's fantastic uh, blitz player and so on, but it's just mathematics. It's simply mathematics, you know, whatever any players, because uh, difference, let's say 400 elo points should score like that. I mean, I'm again, somebody who is 400 elo points lower, Hikaru against somebody who is three, 400, whatever elo points lower, otherwise their rating should have been different. Yes, yeah, so it's mathematics. It's nothing to do with a concrete name. And it's not because it's Hikaru or Magnus. They should break all mat mathematical rules. No, it's still mathematics is, uh, uh, is uh, prevails, you know? So if, if you have five streaks together, yes, for sure. Like, 
Yeah, in 10 games, he should lose one. No, but there's, he, you and know, in 55 games, he should lose five. He'd, okay, there could be some, there could be on some, on some, yeah. on some other planet, there could be a thing to, of winning 50 games in a row, and then next day winning 45. That's what I'm, that's what we're talking about. That was very strange. <laughs> that was extremely strange. What he was, the, how he. I, yeah, I agree. I mean, not even talking about him, but it, 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 it was just like statistically. Uh, strange and uh, only thing is okay i want an answer explanation first of all what is the probability and secondly how it's possible who is i mean if it's extremely low like unrealistic then to find who out of this a lot of players were, were playing not fair yeah that's that's all it can be absolutely anyone let's say a player who losing like zero 020 and who has only 300 elo points lower than hikaru i mean this shouldn't happen so maybe something is wrong with him but some i mean there must be some answer on, on this did himself last time i talked to him was like 10 years ago and he was very shy shy boy uh, somewhere somewhere sitting somewhere now he's a well-known grandmaster and but Ah, sorry, anyway, sorry. we uh, get this result. I personally do. I, I personally don't uh, don't think he cheats. But yeah, that that's was extremely I mean. odd. Extremely. It's odd. very. It's extremely odd. Statistics are odd. No, Hikaru is odd is in a odd. great way. Um, so I I hear you and I agree with you. But when he's played thirty thousand games, you know weird things happen. Um, okay. No, I mean okay. This is not serious. I mean just uh, if he played thirty thousand games, then count how many streaks he had in those 30,000 game and give us a number. I mean, give us a probability number, give us the numbers. I mean, a statistics is not odd. Statistics is, mat is very mathematical and precise, you know, thing, yeah? So please give us numbers and uh, whoever it is, me, Hikaru, Magnus, or some uh, feeder master, it just, he cannot break completely the rules of statistics because this is mass, you know? So, okay, what is this answer? Okay, just give us number. I was asking uh, for, I mean, since two months, just give me the probability number. Count all streaks. You take 30,000 games, the whole period. Counts all streaks like that during 30,000 and give us the probability number. If you take all those streaks, which I've mentioned, they were played in like two months and uh, within 800 games, more or less, yeah? So count then the probability of this but okay give us some some mathematical number not like okay statistics is odd uh, uh, hikaru is odd and it can happen i mean come on okay let me get back to my numbers i want to share with you sure i'm going to just share the so let's say we use a 95 percent confidence interval which is fairly normal for statistics so that means that Two and a half percent of the time, you're going to see things that went better than expected, and two and a half percent of the time, you're going to see things that were worse than expected. Okay, maybe I don't know. Given I don't know that, statistics. If, if I it know, works. I'm trying to help you. Okay. So okay. ninety. So take a hundred percent. Ninety-five percent means you come in two and a half percent on each side. Okay. So there's two and a half times it'll two two point five percent of the time it'll be better than you thought. In two and a half time it'll be two point five percent of the time it'll be worse than you thought. I mean, okay. significant, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we have all the math for what ex is expected. And then we let's just say that the overperformers are people who win games in extremely rare situations. That that they're that there's a less than two and a half percent chance that they should win that game. Okay. So I took four title two recent title Tuesdays on January 9th, two of them and on January 16th. Okay. So on January 9th, there were five hundred and fifty-five people. Who played at least five games. Okay. Nine people in that event performed way better than expected. I that mean, the result they got was like extremely good. But what, I mean, what means way better? I mean, uh, just give us a number. What do you mean by way, way better? I mean, like, it's just, uh, okay, tell me your parameter. Let's say uh, 100 uh, uh, points, uh, rating points above their rating or 200. What is way better? It just, it just like given a certain number, but not proving it, not like giving information where, that you can check it. And now like this, you cannot really say anything. You cannot say, no, it's wrong because then you can always say, no, but I meant instead of 100, I meant 200. 
and then you uh, but you also cannot say it's right because you don't give the main parameter which how you calculated it so then it just like providing a certain information but actually like it's not providing any information because i mean it's not serious yeah i mean what what do you mean by way better they were in that two and a half percent of like performed way better than expected what is now way better? when you then calculate given that there were 555 people if you calculate the odds that nine people would have that good of a result that good what's the probability that that would happen impossible to calculate because you don't give uh, the definition of what is what better what is way better so impossible to calculate next question i mean sorry i have no idea 93.6 percent chance from what so that there will be okay that there will be that this will be odd result over yeah, that there will be nine odd results. I can, I can agree with that. Yeah, that could be a good day. What means odd results, results again? I mean, so the results, the full general results, which, uh, which goes into this uh, probability of two and a half percent. Yeah, of let's say lower than two and a half percent or what? I mean, I, I don't know oh, because at the beginning he was talking about uh, it was talking about uh, particular games, but then if you're talking about games, there were much less games where actually this less than two and a half percent was actually a probability. So then it's a totally different number. I mean, it's a mix of, I mean, just give the number, that amount of players, that amount of such results, those are the results. I mean, that's it. And uh, don't explain it, just give us numbers. It would be much more efficient. Or something else. Yeah. What's interesting is people look at that. And then if you look at this data, there's also a whole bunch of people who had, they played so badly. It was like a one in a hundred chance that they would play that badly. For like sure. For who, sure. There could be a bad day. You lost, uh, you, you lost first game to a cheater for, <laughs> sorry. And then you just devastated and you can, uh, yeah. and you cannot sure. play the next game and then you get out of the tournament. Yeah. yeah that could happen. Y yeah. Now. You could, you could be a 2,500 rated player and, you know, you get you win three games out of eleven. Well, that's a that's an unexpectedly bad outcome. But that's but how it works might... when we see that somebody is doing exceptionally well in one title Tuesday, for example, win it yeah. or go into some uh, top ten, and we we don't even know who it is. You know, you go to his profile. Who the fuck that is? Oh, Turkish boy. What yeah. what is going on? Yeah. And then we start looking again. So yeah, one tournament course. is nothing. Of course, we need to yeah, see him agree. in the ten tournament spirit, and then we can judge. We, we, we agree and we're aligned on this. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, if you agree, you're aligned with it. I've published already and presented to you Chesscom before and published already lots of statistics where quite a number of planes were overperforming so much. I mean, by, by, for, uh, according to their level, I mean, the level of play was for a very long period of time, like 10 tournaments in a row, like 100, more than 100 games in a row was uh, much higher than actually top other top top players and they were not top players and um, okay i mean it uh, nothing is done i mean the, nobody is even interested in this statistic nothing is checked nobody ever asked me uh, anything from chesscom at least to give names or something if if when there were no names i mean again uh, Hikaru, again, not, it's nothing personal about him, but he's overperforming, I mean, in a very long period of time, even taking into consideration how good is he, but still he's heavily overperforming. And you say, okay, we are, we are taking care of it. Yeah, that's what, what we do. Show us, show us. I mean, prove it. I don't see it. But I just want to share, and I agree, that's the important one is to of look when it's it the is. same person over and over again having it. That's what we're, we're looking more at now. But for sorry, sorry, what do you mean? Was that what we are looking more at now? So before you were not looking at it, but I mean, it's a basic thing. I mean, uh, it is absolutely clear and basic that this from the very beginning of anti cheating, let's say, system you had, I mean, that was that you should have been looking at. Uh, and uh, okay, so you mean you started or what? I don't know, but if. If it's uh, if you have been doing it earlier, and I hope so because it's just basic common sense, then why 
there are a lot of performances of, of quite a number of players. They totally fit this parameter that it's very statistically unlikely. I can give you back, give you, if you want privately, all this information, but of course you have it. So why those players are still playing then? For example, the, and I'll just share these last numbers. In Title II, the late Title Tuesday, January 9th, out of, seven, out of 400 people, that 409, there were seven people who overperformed, and there's a nine, an 88.6%. I'm sorry, uh, heavily overperform, overperform, of course, just overperform, obviously much more. Overperformant, what is the number? What is the definition of it? Uh, so, of course, if it's only, uh, let's say, one elo point, one point uh, rating overperformance, of course, there were much more. Uh, what what are you, what do you mean by overperforming? Again, not giving a definition, you give a number. This number without a clear uh, explanation of the test doesn't mean anything. Percent chance that that would happen. And then you go to the next one, the early January 16th, 552 people, 10 overperformances. There's an 84% chance that you're going to have 10 overperformances. Then you go to the late one. There's 373 players. You had eight overperformances. No, there's a 71.6% chance. So greater than half the time that would happen. So what your point and is the important point is now how often is that the same person who's overperforming? And that is a, the right place to be looking. No, I mean, this is a very basic, of course. I mean, one overperformance doesn't mean that much, depending on how huge is this in itself. But uh, of course, it's about many overperformances. And, uh, you know, Eric is telling it as if it's some kind of uh, uh, big revelation. I mean, it's completely obvious, yeah, that this is a point. And okay, can you just uh, uh, proceed talking about uh, such people? And there are many of such uh, players who are earning money, I mean, who are, who are actually over stably overperforming, yeah? And uh, so maybe um, you will tell something about it. Not yeah, just sure. some random person who had a great one. So we, sure. we're, we agree there. Anyway, yeah. I don't know if these numbers are interesting. I think they're interesting. And we're going we're gonna to share more extremely on this. They're extremely interesting, but they're not full. I mean, they, I mean, you don't give the K element to that you that somebody me or some someone of us of you can actually calculate out how how correct are these numbers because and without those important elements i've mentioned earlier all those numbers are just interesting and just numbers you cannot conclude anything so please next time you provide numbers provide it in full uh, that that we can understand 86 per 6 of what overperformance of uh, I mean, what do you mean by overperformance? You know, huge overperformance. What is it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, be serious. Like, if you already talk about numbers, interesting. They're extremely interesting. Thank you very, thank you very much for sharing. Because the one of the problems we have now is lack of information. When when you have lack of information, it, you you suspect everything. Yeah, but it didn't it didn't add to I mean to anything because we are still lacking information. I mean, that's not uh, yeah. Uh, it's not enough information. It's like again. It's like to say, well, I, I, I won a tournament, but out of how many? You know, I mean, out of two, fantastic. Out in several years, out of I don't know, fifty, it's nothing special. So I mean, just uh, it doesn't in itself. These numbers, I mean, just do not tell much. Everybody to be to be trying to hide something or so or or or, yeah. or, or anything. And thanks very much for admitting that that you need to do more in this area and yep. that you are doing it now. That's very uh, good from Chesscom. I, I, uh, I praise you for that. So, uh, Eric, a uh, very important question. Um, only if I can remember which one. Uh, <laughs> it also so, you sent me a list of questions. I can <laughs> no, tell no, you no, the no. questions. <laughs> no, no. Uh, recently, uh, yesterday and uh, today, there were uh, new videos from uh, Vladimir Kramnik on his channel. And... Uh, there was one question, he, he mostly says the same things he told, he told many times, but there is one question that I'm interested in your opinion on. Sure. So he says that Chesscom uh, has some obligations towards the chess world, towards the game of chess, and towards all of us. I personally don't know if it's true, and if I think about it, uh, I'm a person from business, 
who was working for 25 years in 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 uh, private business and my clients were private businesses and I don't understand w- w- what he's talking about. Do you understand what he's talking about? And do you feel sure. that uh, Chesscom has some obligations? And if so, then what are these obligations? First of all, let me tell you, I wish I didn't feel the obligation. It is, feels massive. It's a, it's a 100 so. pound backpack on my day, on my back every single day. Mm-hmm. It is really heavy. Uh, and I absolutely feel it. And some people might say, oh, that's that's bullshit. He's a business guy. He cares about money and nothing else. And I'll just tell you, that's not true. I mean, if I cared about money, I would have taken the job at Facebook in 2007. You know, uh, I, I didn't. And um, I, I did this job because I love it. Have I made good money? Yeah, I've, I've made good money. But I feel the stewardship and responsibility every single day. And everybody on our team does. And there's you could come at it from a... Um, you could come at it from a, you know, an, an ethical or spiritual and say, well, you know, they're the most chess players play on chess.com. You know, there's a, you know, there, and, and you could feel, and I do feel that stewardship of the game, man, there's more people signing up. There's a hundred thousand people every single day saying, Hey, chess.com, I want you to be the place where that helps me enjoy chess. That's a huge responsibility. And I feel it. I don't look at those hundred thousand people and say, ah, that's, that's all that money. That's not how we look at it. So you could look at it from like a philosophical, spiritual stewardship angle, but you could also look at it from a business angle. Nobody owns chess. No one, there's nobody stopping anybody from coming in and doing whatever they want. Fortnite, Roblox, you name it, those people own their game. I don't own chess. I own chess.com, but there's a lot of domain names out there that have not, that are not successful you have to build a product that people like and you have to do the right things for people to like to do it. So from a, if you want to put on the selfish business hat, you have to serve the game because there are other options. People can go somewhere else. People, there are a lot of YouTube channels. There's a lot of places to play chess. There's a lot of chess events. There's a lot of chess coaches. There's a lot of chess software. If chess.com didn't care about it, that would become clear. And if we just focused on money or just focused on our own selfish interests, we would we would absolutely lose our position in the market. So both from a so I tell you, I I mean, in general, I agree with Eric fully there only that uh, with the last sentence that if they would just focus on money, they would lose their position on the market. I'm not really sure it works like that. Usually, as I understand other way around. And uh, I really hope that everything what he tells is sincere and it's true. I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, joking about it. I really hope it is. But then in this uh, anti-cheating uh, measures and all this uh, matter which uh, I'm raising now, okay, here it doesn't seem that they're doing a good job. But I really hope they care about chess and integrity of chess and they really understand that chess is... Uh, the m- more important than them or me or anyone else yeah, as a game. I feel it. Yeah, I feel a little bit of the business angle, but I don't really think about that very often. I feel the deep stewardship over the game. And a lot of people might say, oh, that's that's not that's BS. But, you know, I know what I really feel inside and it's true. No, I don't. I mean, that is true. I mean, most of what he said, I, I believe in. But the last thing that he doesn't think so much about the business, I don't believe. Sorry, because he's a businessman. He's a good businessman, actually. And good businessmen must <laughs> think a lot about the result. Like a good chess player. I mean, if a good chess player, like top one, would say, no, but actually I don't care so much about my performance and result. No, I mean, he would not be a top player. And definitely Chesscom is now the major power in the world of chess, uh, online power. So this, I don't believe that he doesn't care that much. But I do believe that uh, the first part of the speech is what he really thinks. And uh, um, yeah, I hope so at least. And other, everybody at the team does too. I mean, Danny... I mean, I've, I've seen Danny uh, shed a lot of tears over how much he cares about chess. That's true. No, he loves the game. I can see that. I mean, uh, you uh, also, in my personal opinion, you cannot spend too much time in chess if you, if you, do, if you don't love the game. I mean, uh, otherwise, it's not the best world to be in, honestly. <laughs> I, mean, so, <laughs> no, I mean, not too much money, not too much appreciation of what you do. Uh, everybody's fighting everybody, usually. And uh, 
talking well, about bright future? I think future? that was true. I think that was true. I think that's going to change. I think it is changing. I think there's been historically not that much money in chess. I mean, and a lot of the money that did come in was was uh, maybe questionable sources of, of the money. Um, whether philanthropy or mildly, corrupt yeah. or whatever it is, it's, you know. Um, but now I think that the economy and the ecosystem has really grown. Last year, okay, you want to guess numbers? How much money did chess.com pay into the community? Meaning prizes for top players, um, money for chessable course authors, uh, people who are um, getting affiliate money for you know, they're streamers or creators and we're paying them money or they're contract commentators who now have a job professionally commentating. Well, I would say that some of some of it uh, is really not about chess.com. Yeah, like uh, people who are making courses on chessable. First of all, chessable was not chess.com. Secondly, OK, they could have done it uh, with some other platform. So that is a bit of a you know, price money, yes, definitely. Tournaments you make, yes. Okay, uh, yeah, commentators, true, partly, but they would commentate on the other channel. They would comment on other channels. So I would uh, say that, yeah, a little bit like uh, uh, exaggerating, but okay. And I'm not talking about our staff payroll. I'm talking about all the rest of the money that we put back into the community that isn't people who are on our payroll. Uh, Twelve and a half million dollars. Close, <laughs> right around ten million dollars. See, if we talk about money, I'm, I'm, I'm getting better. <laughs> <laughs> this year, I hope it's twelve million dollars. But yeah, we've put money back into the ecosystem. Yeah, and, and how much do you make? Uh, we made uh, not. Ex I'm not going to do the exact, but we did make over a hundred million dollars last year. That's very good, Eric. Congratulations. Thank you, but That's I'm happy because that money. To me, that money fuels the mission. That means more events. That means we get to hire more people. That means we get to put more money into the community. It also means we pay a lot. I agree, and I'm actually happy for Chesscom. I mean, don't misunderstand me. It's good that they're earning good money, but maybe some things they can do more efficiently, like reports, like mathematics, like anti-cheating. If they earn so much money, maybe to spend a bit more to make things uh, more efficient. But uh, I mean, I have nothing against it. And it's good that everybody is earning money, chess.com players, but only if everything goes fair. And if, uh, you know, if uh, this is not connected uh, with, uh, well, mass amount, serious amount of cheating. Yeah, uh, otherwise, uh, great. I'm happy for you, guy. The taxes, it also means we buy a lot of software. It also means that, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's hard to run a bit, you know, you know, this, their expenses are, are, can run high and, you know, they, they're growing over time, but, um, you know, we are fortunate to earn money that we then turn to hire people and put back in the community. No, I gotta say that, uh, your product is becoming uh, better. I don't know. I feel, uh, I feel, I personally don't play online. Uh, but I uh, do some puzzles, I do some some stuff, I watch something. So your product is getting better, and that's and that's very good. So you so we see that you invest some money back. That you're not just came to chess to to get the money uh, and everything. Eric, uh, a few a few more questions to, to the end. So uh, there was one thing that we did with uh, Vladimir Kramnik ah, yeah, that, that I think. Uh, I personally think was a, the most interesting thing he he discovered. It's the number of uh, players that perform extremely a few a few a few players that perform extremely well in the last rounds of Title Tuesday. I hope you've seen uh, we discussed it internally before this broadcast. So. I mean, the idea was you can see this video on Levitov channel, also on Levitov YouTube channel, that actually I've uh, figured out that uh, on in the money games, when actually the money is at stake, uh, the many players start to overperform as they never did before in any previous rounds, in any previous games they played the same tournament. And this is like so huge, the overperformance, and so many players that statistically it is uh, almost impossible 
Yeah, and uh, I published it already a long time ago, almost a half a year ago already, but uh, never got any interest. I didn't mention names, but of course I have all the data and names with me, but n nobody ever contacted me as if it's like someone else's business. But actually it is to me, it's almost a proof that there is a very serious cheating issue on chess.com because the statistical anomaly is so, so absurd, I would say that you just cannot ignore it. But so far chess.com just, it seems to me they ignored it because they never commented on it. They never asked me any data, anything. And uh, okay, so that was like uh, very, very dubious to me. Why? Why it happened like this? So let's hear the answer now. What do you think about that? It's, it's definitely an area of research for us. Um, you know, we've heard that from players anecdotally that some people say, oh, there's more cheating in the first few games because they're less likely to look, so we'll try to get a couple points, or there's more cheating at the end because you're trying to get a better result. These are areas of that we are we are researching right now. You know, I think these are very interesting, and, and you know, it's it's not a crazy hypothesis. It's a fair oh, hypothesis, you, and so we at are least, working. At last. We're building up our capabilities technically to be able to look at all these questions, and we we love this this type of question, and I think it makes a lot of sense. I oh, but I mean, come on, sorry. Don't have answers to this currently, and I would also heavily caution and say that accuracy scores are not a good proxy for fair play. No, but sorry, it was not about accuracy score at all. To start with, this particular research was about purely about performances. And then what do you mean by we are working on it? We are technically improving technically. I mean, this is just pure calculation. It just it takes two days to calculate it out, to check my research and to and to calculate the probability, which is like so low that it almost cannot happen. And to start taking measures, it's been half year already. What what is this answer? It's yeah that it's a valid uh, parameter. Okay, thank you for the first time. Chesscom says that yeah, it's correct. It's it's it makes a lot of sense. And it takes them half year to check uh, the thing, which normally should take one day actually for the team to check to get a completely correct statistics and to understand another day maybe for the mathematicians to calculate the probability and to see that okay there is a problem there is a huge problem i mean what is this answer we are working on it for half a year i mean what kind of technical um you know huge like resources you need if i've done it with my laptop i mean come on come on i mean i i don't i don't believe it i mean this thing i just don't trust your answer because it doesn't make sense please make it i mean and give us the probability and and do something about it if the probability is low that's it point and don't feed me for half a year with some answers like that and at least uh, you know if you would be really interested you would probably ask me contact me or at least react to this but you never reacted on it as if it's not doesn't concern you so i mean i'm sorry this is just not uh, not the way i mean maybe somebody uh, will believe what you say but i i don't because i know it's not i mean how easy is to calculate it out and uh, i mean for you especially i mean i did it on my own uh, all your team like paid for that work i mean with all the resources you have it i can assure you two days is enough to completely finish the study for you for me it took much longer and uh, okay all the parameters i gave everything open source i explained everything okay just do it and start to take measures i mean i don't buy that for half a year no measures are taken and you're working on it for how long five more years you will be working on it come on given how we do them they're very crass very crude you know right move is you know 100 points and blunder is minus 10 and you know the kind of in the middle but when you're doing cheat detection, you know, okay. there's more obvious positions versus harder positions. There's, you know, opening books versus not. There's a lot of different things in there. So okay. I would not use accuracy scores as a as a proxy for in any particular one game. Now, I do think it's interesting in a larger scheme of, of if you're aggregating okay, hundreds least. of accuracy scores over time and looking mm -hmm. at different rounds, that's fair. But okay. you are also seeing different by the time you get to the later rounds, 
you're also seeing different types of matchups of people with higher scores versus lower scores. So there's a lot of different things that you have to control for when, when looking at the data. This I didn't get the point. I mean, what what, uh, what does he mean about the last this matchup? But uh, I mean, uh, but the point is that yeah, correct. In one particular game, it can only be like uh, when you feel the game was really good. It just kind of proves it. So it's a general proof that yeah, you are right. I mean, especially if you're a strong player, you just have a feeling, and then it proves you that yeah, it's correct. It was a really well played game. But in a, as Eric tell, tells himself that in a long period of games, like 100 games, it already is quite telling. This is something new because before Chesscom had a position that it actually simply not relevant factor, which is not correct. And, uh, and now Chesscom is approving it. But then I presented a lot of statistics when, let's say, some players like never been on top and not even top 30 players or some of them not even top 100 were playing for like many tournaments in a row like more than 100 games in a row on the level higher than all top players all top 10 players and again it was ignored why I mean, okay, I publish all the statistics it's there I mean, why do you ignore it? Why no measures are taken? Because it's happening for repeatedly for for very long period of time, consistently and in a row, yeah. So okay, if you say it's valid measure, and I believe in a you are right that in a long uh, you know sequence of games it is quite telling. But then why why these things happening all the time and you don't and you actually don't do anything about it? Yeah, but, but it is a uh, great in- question. Yeah, but in this in this not particular great, case, I uh, mean, uh, great question, but not great answer. I mean, I'm still publishing on Twitter a lot of such things, and I have never received any answer or n- any interest of Chesscom. I mean, so okay, um, strange answer. I mean, then if you admit, then do something. He didn't use accuracy. He used performance. So. Yeah, actually, yeah, actually, it's funny because Elia is telling, yeah, but okay, it's it's actually in this particular case, I was using performance, not accuracy. So, I mean, why you're talking about accuracy? Of course, that's true. This oh. is not is not part of this investigation. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, Eric, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I want to say a few words that uh, I think uh, what is happening now, first of all, is normal is normal we are in the all live in the chess world we work in the chess world and we have a problem now everybody admits that it's not a secret and uh, as usual as usual in every problem there there are different approaches there is a quiet approach there is a less quiet approach there is very loud approach we see many players (laughs) talking about that internally i can i can tell you that uh, you probably know that that everybody discusses that let's say if you talk to a chess player, if two chess players um, are meeting uh, over dinner, they discuss this cheating. And whatever we hear during these dinners is something uh, very disturbing, alarming. And um, my idea is that uh, we continue talking about that. We continue hearing numbers. I'm very, very pleased that you are, and, I ho- and I, I'm pretty sure that everybody will be, including of, of Vladimir, that you will send people to houses, that we will start. All right start to take more actions against this disease because it's spreading and uh, and we just love the game and really want to play there is not there is not much behind that we just uh, i fully agree i mean there is no interest or anything behind but i just see and uh, many other players they see that it's spreading that it's becoming really weird and uh, it's almost becoming more and more difficult for honest players for honest chess players to play online to earn money and we just want to change the situation and uh, uh, that's it uh, no interest i don't earn anything than a headache and some insults and and so on uh, but uh, i mean uh, it's it's correct yeah it's just that we are trying to improve the situation and we really i really hope chesscom is in our side i really hope so because for the moment onwards yes but uh, pretty often, as you have seen in this interview, I mean, uh, the words do not correspond so much to what they do. 
So to sum, to sum it up, what I would like to say, the most important, that we are not enemies of Chesscom. I mean, we are not fighting with Chesscom. We are fighting for uh, fair play online. And this is very important nowadays since fair, uh, since online chess becoming more and more serious, like important part of, of the world of chess. And uh, uh, we just don't want it to be totally spoiled by, uh, by cheating, you know. And that is, that's why we become so active. And it's not only me, it's Fabiano Karana, Maxim Vashielagraf, Levon Aranyan expresses things, Jan Nipomnishi. Recently on his, in his interview, Magnus Carlsen said that uh, have said that uh, cheating is an existential uh, threat for, for the game. And it, everybody understands it. So that's why we are, we are doing so much and so loud, at least me, about it. But, I mean, it's not against Chesscom. It's, a, I mean, uh, but what we want, we are happy that Chesscom uh, is earning good money. We are thankful that Chesscom is organizing a lot of events and makes, uh, well, serious price phones and let people play, that's all fine. But, you know, and we understand as well that there might be financial interest of Chesscom and certain legal issues, etc. I mean, we are not stupid, we understand it, but there must be a certain consensus. Chesscom should also care a lot about uh, fair play. So we have to meet somewhere in the middle and uh, to make uh, like a... Uh, agreement in a way you know non-written agreement that yes you provide uh, tournaments money thank you we provide our we play and we you know we play fair this is what we provide you earn money because we play we earn money because you organize tournament all perfect but we have to do something for chesscom let's say you know to play fair for example not to cheat but you also have to do something for us you also have to do and to do, not just to say, but to do everything in your power to provide as much as you can, as much as it's possible, uh, fair play. But that is, in my opinion, personal opinion, that is very far from reality for the moment. And that is why as long as it is like this, I'm personally going to fight, I'm going to tell, I'm going to open numbers. Once, one day, I feel that something, I mean, I see that something is really seriously done about it, that every, like, weird, strange statistics is considered, is, uh, let's say, something is done, there are certain measures are done about it, I will stop talking about it. But for the moment, it's not the case. A lot of words, not all of them, to put it, you know, let's say, uh, diplomatically are, you know, uh, proven by facts uh, numbers which you give are not complete which uh, you know most of i mean very often they're not complete and and uh, in the other uh, in some other occasions they're just wrong so this is not the way to proceed i mean you want us to be communicating with you to be like part of one team i would like to but then be part of our team as well be transparent be uh, honest with us and we will uh, do the same with you. I mean, that's how it works. Thank you.